I'll tell you what, I'm a city kid. I'm, I'm from Evanston, which is just the first suburb north of Chicago, and grew up, you know, basically around there, and lived around there pretty much all my life. Um, I've always been interested in markets, though, and, and how the stock market and the commodities market acted. Um, and I went to school in, uh, in Mount Vernon, Iowa, at Cornell College. So um, when I was out there every fall, I'd sit there and watch all the, uh, all the corn harvesters roll through because uh, Mount Vernon is not a very big town. So my, that was mostly my view. And in the spring, I'd watch them plant, and it, and it, and it fascinated me. Um, came back to Chicago, decided to, I was going to get myself into grad school, but I needed four or five hours a day, so I decided with my uh, likings for the markets to come on down here and uh, get a runner's job and work on my MBA, and when I got my MBA, go get a real job. And here I am over 30 years later still, still wondering if I should go out and get a real job or not. So. I was an economics major, and that, that sort of thing has always fascinated me. Um, and really, uh, I think futures trading is just raw economic brute force in action. So I think maybe from that point of view, understanding how the economics works, uh, the theory behind how economics works uh, can, can really help you out. I know a lot of... Uh, a lot of people take specific ag and, and ag type courses thinking that it can help you down here um, and maybe it does. I've, I've never really taken any of those courses. I had to learn all that sort of thing down here and I know that uh, you know there are other people say that different types of professions actually such as you know lawyers or engineers with, that are more analytical or what have you uh, end up making good traders which could be true too. I'm an economist instead. This is a world that I really knew nothing about. Um, I knew about you know stocks and bonds and prices going up and prices going down, but how it actually came to be and you know in the grains or down here, for example, I had no real idea. So I was uh, I ran for several months and then I became a phone clerk and uh, continued to work my way up. You know, as a floor specialist, floor analyst, and eventually it came time for me to either uh, trade for myself or, or trade for customers, and I chose customers. But it was all pretty much on the job training. I'd sit around the office and listen to people talk about grains, and that's how I started learning about grains. And it's fascinating. It's fascinating how it all comes together. Uh, then I was able to start doing some of my own analysis, especially when the options opened for corn and soybeans. I was put in charge of that. So I was the floor specialist in handling trades for special clients and, and providing analysis to the entire company. First of all, you have to be willing to accept risk, but then you have to be able to measure that risk. And those that can have a good way to measure that risk have a better chance of success. And, and you have to be very, very disciplined. Uh, that hasn't changed. That was true 30 years ago, it's true today. Um, I've found that when I have, when I, I, when I stick to my system, the way that I was taught to do things and brought up to do things in this business, when I stick to that, I'm going to make money for my customers. Maybe not every trade, but I will make money for my customers generally at the end of a year or whatever. Uh, I find that when I start getting carried away with, with my emotions and my what I and what I was trained to do, that's when I start losing money and make bad bad trades for my customers. The main task, at least in ag markets, is to feed the world. And we're what we're seeing even beyond, you know, the immediate cycle of having the funds come in and go out is we're seeing people with more money, especially in China, but really everywhere else around the world. People are making a little bit more money. Instead of eating maybe rice or rice and beans or whatever they used to eat, they're liking a little piece of chicken or pork or, or beef in their, with, their, with their food right now. Uh, and that takes money and that takes time and, you know, and agricultural production. So I think we're going to see the ag sector generally remain very strong, much stronger than we saw, say, 10 or 15 years ago in terms of price, because we, ha we have to work this through.